<laughs> a lot of blood draining in here right now. <laughs> to the Jeopardy, please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for October 12th, 2017, uh, predominantly to deal with budget issues. We'll start with public uh, comment. Is there anybody wishing to speak tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to announcements and community calendar. Uh, Regina? Nothing, Mr. Chairman. It's just uh, they're continuing the project on uh, Lafayette Road, and I know the Public Works Department had a meeting here last night with some of the folks up there, and uh, it was very informative for those folks that came to it. Uh, and uh, there were some good questions asked, and uh, uh, consensus was that the, the, they're doing a great job at keeping the folks informed. So, You're good, Mr. Bean. Negative, sir. Thank you. Okay, we'll start with the uh, old business budget discussion, and we'll start with the fire chief and the deputy chief. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Very well, thank you, and thank you for allowing us to come speak with you. Sir, if it's all right, a public service announcement, this is Fire Prevention Week, and we have a lot of students coming in, so we ask that the uh, drivers at home please pay attention in the roadway. And also the press for this right now this year is to have an escape plan in the home and to have two exits to get out. So if you have any children in the schools, you're there coming home with that message, we ask that you please uh, partake in that. Okay. Um, this evening, for and you have a... Sorry. Open house Sunday? We do have an open house Sunday. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. Um, that is going to be from 10 to 1. It'll be at behind the headquarters fire station. We'll be doing uh, several demonstrations, uh, how to use a fire extinguisher. There will be a, a car that we'll be cutting up. Uh, we're going to have representatives from other agencies. Portsmouth Hospital will be down to talk. And we're also going to be having, excuse me, the Coast Guard helicopter. Jayhawk's going to be landing. Coast Guard canceled on us. Oh. So we know we have uh, darts coming back. Darts coming back. So that helicopter will be landing in the field behind. Uh, so we invite the, the public, please come down and say hello. All right. So this year, uh, this is our third year presenting to you for the budget. And uh, we can tell you that looking <coughs> historically at the budgets that have been presented, the first year that I sat in front of you in 2014, we didn't have a great handle on what the building would do. Um, we've now had experience in the building, so some of the numbers that you're going to see are going to reflect that. Um, much of the change that you're going to see has been put in as a result of uh, collective bargaining agreements, and they're compounded. The collective bargaining agreements for Local 2664 went through last year, and so next year's projection, or this past year, next year's projection is in this budget. Uh, if you'd like, we can start right away at the top line and move down. It's up to you how you'd like to do it. Sure, that looks good. That sounds okay. good. Sure. So uh, our top line is dealing with regular wages. There has been a minor increase in that line item, uh, under 1% uh, for administration. Holiday pay, a uh, small increase there, it's contractual obligations. Um, we did see an increase in staff development. Uh, we have put in for, uh, I believe that it was one more uh, association fee for the International Association of Fire Chiefs. One of our captains has requested uh, membership there. Um, Supplies and expenses, you're going to see a small increase. As you know, last year we received a new copier. We purchased a new copier. With that agreement uh, and the purchase of that new copier, we had one year free for all color and black and white copies. Uh, after that first year, now we're responsible for toner. That's the increase that you're seeing there. Gasoline and diesel, these line items have been, uh, with the assistance of Christy from Finance, these line items have been added to this part of our budget, and they've been brought down to one line item. We used to have several for each. Uh, the increases are based on known usage and the gallonage, the price per gallon that we were using as a fixed price point. I do believe that was $1.84 for uh, gasoline and two hundred nine for diesel for next year. Any questions on administration? I, I just, on, on, the, on the gasoline and diesel, so you've combined a couple of... So, right. Um, we did do that last year. This is the first year that we're actually seeing it totally added. Uh, fire prevention, fire apparatus, the administration, all of the vehicles are in one line item now, where it used to be spread out throughout the budget. This is all in one one place now, so it's been removed from other line items. 
Okay, so last yeah, year. Let's make that in the 17 budget, though. Let's make sure that we make that clear. In the 17 budget, in all of the departments, we condensed all of the gasoline and diesel line items into one section. And so we put it under administration in each of the budgets. So, and I literally, they have very little input on that because what we've been doing is we've been monitoring the usage. Um, we get great reports from the WEX system that we're using. So we monitor the usage. I haven't put the September numbers in yet, but once I have all of my September numbers, we'll check our gallons, we'll update all the sections of the budget, and we'll decide. We also have been keeping a track of what the average price per gallon is throughout the year, and so we will update that as we go through the process here. So, so on the diesel, it yes. went from 9000 to 16000 So is, is that because of added price at the pump yep. or because of added usage? In, um, mostly at the price at the pump because in seventeen, the price that we had put into our budget was $1.74 or 75 I can't remember. And this year, what did you say? Back 209 then? No, for diesel? Oh, yeah. diesel, I'm sorry. Diesel was at $1.98, I think, in gotcha. the seventeen budget. I'd have to go back and look. But, yeah, the price is mostly what's driving that, not the usage. And then, Chief, one other, you said on the staff development. Right. One membership, you said. That. So this is the, the line item that we use for professional memberships. And uh, with that, we, we obtain a lot of information. So the International Association of Fire Chiefs membership um, allows you to go in and obtain um, a lot of education material for the department. Um, I have a membership, and Captain Cutting now has a membership. So this is a part of his growth plan as well. But in moving so where he's able to provide a lot of education to the firefighters through that, so it's a, I believe it's a total of a hundred dollars. So you get a lot of a lot of benefit. Out Significant of it. amount, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. When we move to fire suppression, um, there's a 5.10 percent increase. Again, as I stated, that is uh, contractual obligations. Uh, this year we also had all but one firefighter uh, obtain the certification for rescue swimmer and rescue boat operator which part of the new contract, once they obtain that, they get a 1% stipend. <laughs> so that increase is seen in here. Um, no changes along the lines of OT wages. Callback, we left the same. Sick leave coverage, projecting out from what we saw at the end of, uh, at the beginning of, the, it was actually the beginning of summer, it was May, June, when we turned the budget in to Mr. Welch. Um, we were projecting that we would be at, uh, I believe it was about a third of the year. That was the numbers that we were able to look at. Um, we were not in any way, shape, or form where we were two years ago, if you recall. We had a lot of long-term injuries. However, what we were seeing was an increase in, or the, the sick time was right at the mark. And I felt that that would be threatened if we did have anybody with a long-term injury. Um, so what I did is I looked and I projected out the numbers from where they were to where they would be by the end of the year. And I factored in the three the, the contractual obligations for next year, and I took half of that number for the overage, and so I added the aver the half of that number for the overage to make it um, you know work with us. The vacation coverage, uh, based on the contractual obligations and the changes, I upped that um, because that's an item that is going to be paid out, and we wanted to make sure that we had enough funding for that. Career incentives, you'll see an NA. Um, the line item prior to that says negative 52,219. Um, this is the career incentives for paramedic and AEMT uh, certifications, the defibrillator, that sort of thing. They're all contractual obligations, but they're paid out of the 27 fund, which is the EMS fund. So this kind of backdoors into the budget, but it's not given as a line item um, here. It's not part of the fire budget. It comes in from the EMS budget. Fireworks detail wages. Uh, this year we instituted the fireworks detail again as you had um, wanted to do last year. Uh, and with the contractual obligations, they we increased that by $500 to cover the costs. Protective clothing, we left the same. Uh, we still anticipate that we're going to be needing a large purchase in 2019 as, as a lot of the gear will be going by the wayside. But as if, you, if you'll recall, I was looking to do program replacement, and Deputy's actually just purchased four new sets, um, and they should be arriving within the next four weeks. Um, we're doing program replacement before we get there, so the gear that we had that will be 10 years old, most of the sets will already have been replaced, which is the, their workable lifespan when we get to that point. Uh, we feel that this is a, a reasonable number to keep moving forward because we're going to keep on that space. Technical hazards, 
Uh, we haven't had any change. Um, if anybody was by the fire station today, they saw that we had purchased some new materials for that, speedy dry, and we have foam coming. Um, for new equipment, in the new equipment line item, and this, this line item went up by 4.58%, but my intent to use here is the new equipment, equipment line item will buy uh, extrication tools for engine four. If you recall last year, I was talking about engine four coming in. The warrant article covered the engine. We were purchasing equipment out of the fire department budget. The one thing that we couldn't afford, it was $24,000 to get hydraulic equipment for cutters and spreaders, the jaws of life, if you will. Um, and we're moving to, to purchase that next year for that engine so it's equipped. On equipment other, it's a 30% change that you're gonna see, but it is a small line item change. The reason for that is that we are coming up on our second five-year cycle for our SCBA bottles. In every five years, the SCBA bottles must be hydrostatically tested, and the cost of service is included in that. Additionally, we have to calibrate our port account, which is an SCBA testing device to determine that the mask still fits. It's a fit test, and each firefighter and officer goes through that. They breathe to make sure that there's no leaks. So uh, we added that line item in. Previously, that wasn't in the budget. So that's a yearly test, by the way. And replacement equipment. Last year we had talked about Marine One. Uh, if you'll recall, the port side motor was replaced as a result of a catastrophic failure during a training exercise out in the harbor. Um, the starboard side motor is of the same age, it's 15 years old. Uh, to, to look at it, it's completely different. It's very old, it's rusted. I feel that that's a dangerous thing to have on the, um, on the boat as we're moving forward, you know, when, when this budget hits. We'll be coming into the summer season again. It'll be 16 years old at that time, and I feel that it would be uh, dangerous to fail under rescue conditions. So we're looking to replace that and make that current. That's a total of twenty thousand dollars for the replacement of that motor. <clears throat> Any questions on the fire suppression side? I I just have one question yes, on fireworks detail wages. So as of eight thirty one, it's only one hundred and fifty dollars. Is that? Uh, I don't think that that was calculated probably because the that was just not taken out of taking the line item. The general entry will reflect that. Um, the first year we took it out of the 26 fund, if you recall. This year we took it out of the fire budget fund. Okay. Uh, we had 15, 15 total fireworks shoots so far this summer. One remains at New Year's Eve, um, when and all of the money is going to be expended from that line item for sure. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Chief, I have a question on on the. Uh, Replacement equipment on, on Marine One. Sure. It, it, it would be better to put money away every year, aside every year, so that when that comes up, it's not like a twenty thousand dollar. You know that it's. Sure. Uh, it, I I don't disagree. Um, this is a it's a seemingly capital expense twenty thousand dollars. I understand <coughs> that. Um, however, when we look at it, the first one's got us through fifteen years. The 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 port side failed at fourteen years. The one that we're replacing hopefully uh, in the springtime, that's a 15-year-old motor. At 15 years, I think that we're looking at program replacement. If it was an automobile, you'd be replacing it after 15 years. So putting money aside, I don't disagree. Um, our marine program is exceptionally active. We have a lot of people who are, you know, have been rescued by that boat. So I, I think that that would certainly be well served. Um, there's no mechanism right now that I know of. The last time we did have a mechanism like that, it wasn't funded and that was removed, I believe, two sessions ago. And you stayed on top of that because I was reading where uh, because of all the devastation down in the Caribbean, where all the, uh, the charter companies have tied up like new boats for the next five years. Oh yeah. Orders, so I don't know if motors are gonna be the same type of thing and prices are starting to increase because of that. I would imagine, yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, it's funny you say that because this year we did do a lot of maintenance on Marine One. We had it taken out, it's hauled out, um, repainted on the bottom, and we are being diligent about maintaining that piece um, because we don't want to get into that situation, for sure. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anybody else? <clears throat> Mr. Bean. Negative, sir. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Fire prevention, uh, little to no change. Um, I did uh, take some off, you'll see, in the supplies and expenses. Uh, this is a situation where our fire prevention secretary had done a lot of legwork and found a great deal with a different company. We, we had been using similar vendors, then, and she had found another deal. They came through, and they were significantly less priced. So moving forward, we feel that we'll be able to get all that we need for fire prevention week like this week and the open house uh, with the budget line item as it stands. 
Any questions? Fire prevention. Training budget. Under the training budget is medical services. Our medical services have been funded for approximately three new firefighters per year for physical. Um, physicals range in price, and as you might imagine, it depends on what's needed. Um, there, to do a occupational health physical first intake, it ranges from seven hundred and fifty dollars to fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, there's vaccines that need to be administered, and there's a whole host of battery tests that that they have to go through. We have been working with our vendors, and we actually found a new vendor and reduced our price significantly. One of the reasons that I did add in this budget is because moving forward, we also have another need, and I've actually talked to Mr. Welch about this, the, um, the requirement for firefighters to have a current physical, which will last three years, to attend any uh, practical portion of the testing at the New Hampshire Fire Academy. They want a certification that they're going to be healthy enough to do that practical, so these, these um, tests will be accounted for. Okay, um, new equipment, we left that at zero. Training and recruitment is a significant change here. Uh, the training and recruitment line item, as I had told you last year, and we had discussed it at length uh, the year prior, I was looking for live fire training, if you recall. And this is where we would send one group, entire group, per day. They'd have one day per year to go off and train as a team. Um, I'm looking to continue that, and there are a great deal uh, of many of the schools that they need to attend, not the least of which would be trench rescue, our ice rescue. We had purchased the ice rescue equipment last year. We need to have a day of training so that everybody's on the same page and understands how to use it. In order to do that, I need to be able to pay them. So this line item was dedicated to that one day of training for each group member as a group, as a team, moving forward one time per year. Any questions on it? Negative, sir. Okay. Oh, let me just... So the live training, so you're right. sending, so explain that again. So, okay, um, whether it's in the burn building, which is up in Concord, we have permission to use the one in Nashua now as well. Uh, as you may recall, the Guilford site that we had been using has burned down. Um, but live fire training, there is a live fire component. Crews will be able to stretch lines, do search and rescue, and perform as they would on a fire ground. That's not the only thing that we need to do, obviously. We have um, vehicle extrication where the whole team has to work, um, cutting up vehicles and understanding the tools. These are expensive tools, but they're more importantly dangerous tools, so they need to learn how to use them appropriately. Ice rescue equipment, um, the lecture and getting out on the ice is, is a component of our job. And so in order to do that, uh, we need to train to do that appropriately. Um, rescue swimmer training, that, that all takes our, our time, and it takes time as a group so that the entire team can work off the same page in the same playbook. In order to do that, they need to do that not on duty. Uh, too often we see it, and we do it a lot, we do a lot of on-duty training, where an ambulance will get called out and two guys will leave, and then another ambulance will get called out, two more firefighters will leave. So the, the core is gone. What we're looking to do is have one day where they're uninterrupted training. And are these required training? I mean, are these state requirements, federal requirements, any? So the only federal, the only requirement right now, state requirement, is that all firefighters meet the uh, Firefighter 1 and Firefighter 2 standard after the first year. Um, however, since we have a Marine Rescue Unit, and as I've stated to you in the past during our Board of Selectmen meetings, putting somebody in a dangerous environment, they can't go in there without proper training, otherwise it's negligence on my part. So when it comes to putting somebody in the water, they need to have rescue swimmer training. If they're gonna drive Marine One, they should have rescue boat operator training. There's no requirement for that, but we have a limited amount of personnel and they all have to be qualified. When it comes to ice rescue, if you recall, we, we were very popular on YouTube for rescuing a dog last year. Well, you know what? Those guys rode in a bass boat and it was somebody else's bass boat. We've received equipment that we've, we haven't trained on yet. We didn't have the ice to, to finish the training once we received the equipment. But it's our goal to get people qualified and ready to do ice rescue training. The last place I can put them is out on a dangerous situation. Um, for fire training, which, as I told you last year, um, it's equivalent to uh, the police officers where they have to qualify with their sidearms every year. This is something that needs to be ongoing. Uh, it's my goal to get live fire training every year, but there's so many other requirements for training that w I'm just trying to get one day with the entire team to move forward for now. Uh, live fire training has become very difficult to obtain because of the venues that we have to go to, but um, I believe that we're going to be all set now. I've done some negotiating with 
uh, Nashua, and they are exceptionally open to letting us use their burn building. So that opens up our, our venue by 50%. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Good. Communications. Small changes, all collective bargaining agreement. Um, the OT wages is up. You see 8.61%. One of the things about working on 24s is that information is tough to pass on from group to group, and the fire alarm operators live in a hole. If you've ever seen it, and we kind of, it's a, it's that's a joke, you know, tongue in cheek joke. But they're they're in a box up front, and that's kind of where they stay. They don't share the stories of the day as much as the firefighters do, and the officers in the back. Um, so, in order to come together as a meeting, so that they can share um, whatever might be, you know, new information, education. What we've done is we're establishing a once per quarter meeting for the fire alarm operators. A firefighter will cover the fire alarm operator that's on duty for the day for two hours, and then all four fire alarm operators will meet together and have a meeting to go over policy, go over any new training that might be coming out, or any other changes that have gone through. So that's that change there. Radio maintenance has been bumped up under that line item, as you'll see, to 21.47%. Um, we've added the uh, FDDA circuits in there. Um, that was added last year as well. If you recall, those FDDA circuits are four wire, copper wires that go from the voters, which are essentially antennas located um, throughout the geography of the town, <coughs> and they go to the repeater. We had to do some work to get that over um, the, the Alexander Graham Bell wires. We changed them over. Um, the cost for that, I believe, is $544 a month. So for a total of just over $6,000, we added that into that line item, and you see that this brought this cost up. Uh, in general, most of the changes, as you'll see, the 2.63% can be attributed to um, contractual obligations. Questions? No new software or anything that we need for this? Or? <clears throat> Currently, um, for what we're doing, um, we're using IMC still. Okay, and I have that in there as well, which I, I was look, reviewing the budget this morning, and I have the bill actually for next year, and we're down, but the, the budgeted amount is about $600 less than the bill for coming next year. Um, the danger of doing the budget six months before you get the bill, I guess. Um, we're using IMC. We have an Acorn recorder. We have all of these different software programs. The, the current mode that we're in right now, we're okay. If we choose to upgrade our software, that will come at a different time. And Mr. Welsh and I have talked about that. That's a that's a one-time purchase, potentially as a warrant article. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, repair services. Um, we haven't asked for any changes in the OT wages. Uh, this is what funds people to go like today. We went and retrieved the um, the engine, the new Pierce engine, the used Pierce engine from Vassalboro after it's had the pump work um, to a company, the deputy going up there we have to pay somebody to do that. If it's a nine-person day, we usually take one. Today was an eight-person day, so they have to be brought in all over time. And that's what that primarily is. It's also being used for any of the work to go to um, the marine unit um, ma uh, maintenance. Our work is done at Salisbury at Hudson Marine, so bringing the boat there and bring, retrieving it, bringing it back, that sort of thing. Uh, the vehicle maintenance has gone up significantly, as you'll see, by about 25%. This is a, um, we have really been dogged about keeping good records and maintaining, and the deputy's in charge of vehicle maintenance, and he's been doing a tremendous job of keeping all vehicles running. Uh, as we've highlighted to you, we've had problems in the past. No doubt you remember that Engine 2 was certainly a big problem. Frames were rusted, and they, they were um, unserviceable. We went through all the other trucks. Recently, we noticed that the ladder truck was having a problem with the frame rails. We sent that out. It was sandblasted and painted. Uh, however, now, the, the ladder truck itself, the exterior of the vehicle, the paint is really wearing. It's a 2006 Pierce, and there are cracks showing up, the paint's bubbling. We have concerns that this is going to become only worse and not get better. So we've gone out and looked at getting quotes for repainting the entire ladder truck from cab to um, rear wheels or all the way back. And we've gotten two quotes from companies that were able to do it. Painting a ladder truck is not the same thing as painting a Mazda, let's face it. So you need a large venue to be able to do that. Um, of those two quotes, one was 44000 I believe, yep. and the other one was 33000 
So we took the $33,000 quote and put that into the budget moving forward as part of vehicle maintenance because we feel that by painting the ladder again and getting that sound, that vehicle will last us another 10 years. So it's 11 years old as it stands right now. We feel that we'll get another 10 years out. Question? Questions? Um, no, and I just, I just, the only thing that sticks out, which is great job on the budget, but just the 831 me. balance is only 54000 now. I'm assuming that, is there open items still on that? Which one are you looking at, ma'am? The vehicle maintenance, the actual as of 831. Under repair services? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at my current. Oh, okay. I can tell you. <clears throat> We're at 58% spent now, right? No, it's at, the vehicle maintenance line is at 58,000. Didn't you say 58,000 have been spent so far? And a vehicle maintenance, 54, 171. Okay, well, we're at, we've spent another four, so you're at 58,000. Yeah, and we've spent more than that. We've gotten tires on two new vehicles. Yeah, we've done actually, so there's a lot more, there's a lot more okay. that hasn't hit your roll yet. Okay, great, thank you. Yep. You anticipate spending the whole 125 for um, the repair? Yeah, for the vehicle maintenance budget, yeah. that usually comes in within pennies. Okay. Um, the additional thirty-three thousand dollars would come in as a one-time, you know, deal. Yeah. So. Now, on, on regular daily maintenance, I mean, we live in an environment that <clears throat> destroys vehicles. That's true. We all know because of the salt and everything. Uh, I mean, not only just getting it painted, but regularly maintenance is going on. I'm sure, right? To clean Constantly. it. Constantly. Okay constantly yeah. so our vehicle maintenance line items this year went on three engines not four because we didn't maintain engine two um, and one ladder truck our two vehicles are brand new so they're only a year old uh, unfortunately fortunately however you look at it the deputy's not impressed with my ability to find nails so we had to buy tires for my vehicle um, <laughs> because I've had nails in the tires um, we, Nate Denio, the EMS officer, just received a new vehicle, and with that, the fire prevention officer vehicle was turned in. So that was becoming a, a nuisance for maintenance, and we we're spending a lot of money on it. Now he's driving around in the EMS, ve EMS officer's vehicle, um, which was less problematic. The deputy's on me every day, every day, to get a new utility. Mr. Welch and I have already talked about that. We put into the capital improvement every day. He's talking every day. to me about that every because day. similar problems. Um, the frame's rusting out, and so is the body on this um, utility truck. So we're looking to potentially get that going. Um, the bucket truck was exceptionally important when we had fire alarm, and now it's resting a lot more than it used to, but it's still out there all the time. Um, we've been changing lights, as you might have seen. There were problems with some of our traffic lights. That truck goes out there, but it's not uh, it's not a daily use truck. So when they go out and use it, the Notice problem with the brakes. Notice problem here. So it's being repaired. We're doing a lot of repairs and we're maintaining all of our equipment. All right. And when I started, I talked to you about how we didn't have experience. In 2014, we really didn't have a trend for our buildings. Um, we were living in them for about a year, but we didn't have a year's worth of bills. Uh, over the course of the last three years, we've been able to watch. And based on the last two for electricity and heating fuel, you'll see that I made some changes here. And I reduced them based on what I know we've been spending. Projecting out, and I maintained a buffer of about 1% over. And so you'll see that I have almost 10% reduction for electric and heating fuel is down two. Um, building maintenance, I did increase as a result of Repair service agreements, the elevator inspection, and something called generator load testing. So we have new generators with these buildings. One is 125 kilowatt and the other one is 150 kilowatt. Um, these generators need maintenance, as you might imagine, they're diesel engines. Uh, the diesel engines are great and they run weekly as a test, but they need to be tested under load. To do that, we need to bring in a company who's going to test them and have a significant load bank, and that's not free. So the changes that you see here reflect that. I believe the total increase was $5,000, 5442 um, To that end, most of that is because of the generators. In total, our increase that we're looking for is 5.68%. Um, Ms. Pulliam actually talked to me about the, the general portion of that, and if you don't mind, ma'am, I'm going to ask you what you had mentioned to me, that um, 
the primary drivers were the contractual obligations, wages. wages. So, and in fact, in her calculations, 103% of that was wages. We've made adjustments. We've reduced where we could so that we could maintain that. Uh, the SCBAs obviously are going to be costly this year, but we're not purchasing new bottles at the frequency that we did before. So what we're going to do is lower the amount that we're going to purchase. We've we've maintained where we could. We've lowered where we could. I, I feel that this is as tight as I could make it. And, you know, again, I'll, I'll answer any questions if you have them. <coughs> I have nothing at this time. All right, I guess fair reason. Negative, sir. Um, yeah, the, the only thing I would say is that, like, on a couple of items, you're really going to have to get out there and, and, and push for it. Understood. You know, you know, like the live fire training, you know, yep. the importance of it and stuff. Because when the budget comes up and people look at it and they say, well, let's get a 60% increase right away, they don't think about what you're saying. They think that's a 60% increase. Right. And I'm against that's, you know, Sure. That's their feeling. So I think I think it's really important to get out there and talk about those things and why that why the certain areas in the budget went up, so that people understand it. You know when right. they go to vote. So. And I and I understand that completely. Um, you know I had a, a wonderful experience with the family this year. We were able to take the kids down to see uh, the Patriots training camp, and it was really tremendous. You get down there and you see some of the world class athletes and they're practicing, and they were able to do that while they were working not being called out to go play in a game yet. We need to be able to practice. We do, because currently our jobs are very dangerous. They don't happen every day. We're not running to, uh, from fire to fire. So in order to keep that teamwork tight, we need to practice. We really do. Um, the 60%, the percent sign is certainly, that's a, that's a large increase. But in total, for this line item, the total amount that the budget will increase as a result of training is twenty thousand six hundred twenty-four dollars. So the percentage looks large, but the actual dollar cost and the benefit from it, I feel, certainly outweighs it. Right, and that's just something we need to make sure yes, the public hears, make sure the voters hear it, make sure the taxpayers hear it, make sure they're talking about it. Yes, sir. Currently, there's a new training um, that's coming from the fire academy. It hasn't hit yet. It's going to be an eight-hour course uh, for EMS in the warm zone. We've already conducted a significant amount of training in that regard, and we're working with the police department in order to do more. Actually, next week we have two two-hour sessions um, on Tuesday and Wednesday and two two-hour sessions on Monday and Tuesday the following week, and we're working in conjunction with them to um, to bring this training in-house. As you, you've seen, in, it's a dangerous place that we live. So this training is already ongoing. Um, with the fire training, I feel like that's essential. One of the things you might want to look at when it, this budget moves forward is having a, a list of your rolling stock. Yes, sir. And, and just have, you know, the condition it's in, what it's like, and, and, and what you foresee on that. I think Certainly. that helps when, when you're trying to explain to other people what it is. It's understood. I think we're not going to vote on this, right? We're going to. It's up to you. Why not? Well, Rick's not here, and I think Rick would want to look at it, discuss it, and I. I would think that that's my feeling. We would go with other people what their feeling is. I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to move now. It's, it, I think it's a great budget. I think it's uh, it's up moderately. I think, um, I'm prepared to move the budget as presented. I know Rick was in, and he he said he's looked at stuff and didn't have seem to have too much of a problem over anything. So. Yeah. There were no shockers. So. I think that's why he popped in, yeah. Yeah, so. You need no disrespect, Mr. Chairman, um, and I'm happy to bring it back if Rick wants to, but uh, I would move the budget as presented. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. We do appreciate it. Have a great night. <clears throat>
I'm going to try to save us a little time because I do have three budgets to present. I have the police department budget, uh, health and human services, which is the animal control budget, and the uh, emergency management budget. The last two aren't that <coughs> big, but I want to make sure we have a little time because there are uh, some adjustments in the animal control budget with the retirement of Pete McKinnon. So opening up, uh, you'll see <coughs> we're looking at a 6.24% uh, increase over last year. They're requesting over half of that uh, is going to be contractual obligation issues that we're in the second year of a contract with the Hampton Police Association. So the majority of the costs uh, are going to be associated to that. <coughs> You're going to notice some changes in different lines. One of the uh, things that we've been trying to do over the last couple of years with the assistance of the finance director is to consolidate lines. Uh, these budgets can be very difficult to follow along with. And sometimes when you read some of the lines that were developed over 30 years ago, they don't really reflect what's going on by today's standards. So that's an ongoing effort, I, and we made some more uh, improvements in that, and that will continue uh, as we progress through these different budgets, trying to consolidate lines and make them very uh, open for anybody to understand what we're asking for and what the money is going towards. So if we look at our administration uh, subtotal, that's up 13 uh, percent, just over 13 percent. A big part of that you'll see is the OT wages. Uh, that's up 232 percent. And if we, oh, sorry, let me move back to the proper sheet here. Well, it's a big percentage jump. Uh, numerically, it's not as big a number. Um, the biggest addition we've done is we routinely have in-house maintenance and repairs done on our computer system, uh, as opposed to bringing in an outside vendor. The major things, obviously, we'd have to bring in, but we have some folks that are trained under Lieutenant Goditis, uh, Goditis's, uh direction. That amount is just a movement of the overtime that we would spend normally for Lieutenant Goditis, or if it's one of the patrol people that have been trained to do this. I wanted to put that in one location so we get an accurate cost of what we're doing. So that uh, line that you see of 12800 that's based on six hours per week at average patrol overtime rate. So we have uh, systems go down, computers break down, monitors go down, and on average, trying to keep our system up to what it needs to be, we average it at six hours based at the overtime rate for patrol. So that's what that reflects there. The money correspondingly uh, the overtime that we have in other areas where we used to take it from won't come out of those lines any longer. It's going to be specifically out of that so we can track that uh, on a more consistent basis so we know what we're spending on our maintenance in-house as opposed to bringing in outside vendors. The uh, vehicle maintenance you'll see is up a thousand percent. That's due to a consolidation. We used to have vehicle maintenance in uh, three different places. We had it in admin, uh, traffic, uh, crime control investigations and in the patrol section. Those are all now consolidated under admin. There was really no point to having three different line items for the same type of work being done, so we consolidated those items. So when you look into, say, uh, crime control, you'll notice that that's been zeroed out. Previously, that had been at uh, last year's, or for this year's budget uh, for 17 was 3000 we just added that to the admin and the patrol and came up with that number, and that's where the budget, and, you know, looks a thousand, you know, it's a thousand percent up. Oh, that's because we consolidated the line. It zeroes out in other places. So it's actually down to, because if you add up uh, all of the 17 budget lines for vehicle maintenance, they totaled $41,680, and he's only asking for 41500 So you're actually a little lower in little vehicle maintenance. The reason for that is, I believe our entire fleet now, we no longer have any of the Crown Vixen the inventory, so they're all the newer vehicles and they tend to hold up better and the maintenance is a little bit easier. And we're doing a lot of the maintenance right here in town with Public Works, which has been a great help. So, that's our admin section, if there's any questions on that. Questions? I'm nothing. Nope. Yeah, Chief, uh, you know, that, that is the, uh, the command element. That's the head shed stuff. And uh, 80 year lines are down. Uh, a couple that are up uh, statistically or uh, uh, 
two, three percent. Uh, a bunch of them are flat. We've gotten rid of consulting, I see. Thank you. Uh, and, and you are, are beefing up career incentives. Uh, that one has increased a bit, which is great. Your overtime wage as well, it says 232 percent or whatever. It, it's 1500 bucks a month. It's, uh, it's short money. Um, and the, uh, the computer supplies and expense, we all are better in the business world, and as the Chief just talked about, computers cost money. Thank you. That's a, that's a nice budget for your, uh, your administration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question on the career incentives. So far this year, you've spent zero. Career incentives. Yeah, but the one I'm looking at here, let's see. I believe... Okay. It's 3500 in the budget, and actual says zero. Those oh. are paid in November. Oh, okay. Yeah. Career incentives and, and holiday pay across all the budgets, you'll see them at zero because okay. they are paid out uh, the last week in November, first week in December. Okay. Thank You'll be 100% you. very shortly. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Super. <clears throat> Crime controls and investigations? Sure. All right. Uh, Again, I'd highlight those areas that you see uh, minus 100% that we've zeroed out. Rentals and leases. Um, rentals and leases uh, was the, uh, the phones. I consolidated all the phones. When we get our bill, what I noticed is we get our bill from Verizon. They don't distinguish separate bills for our cell phone bill as opposed to our in-house phone bill. It's all one bill. So I just determine that we should just take all the phone bills, whatever they may be, and put them into one line. So you'll find that the uh, cell phones are going to be consolidated on the uh, 105-3410, further down in the budget. So it's not actually a, a, a zero, it's just we moved it to consolidate the, the line item. OT wages uh, down 22.90. Um, just looking at that, just trying to adjust to uh, historic run rates and based on what our current rates are actually out back in detectives. So that's the change that you're seeing reflected there. Some of that OT up in the administration? Is that part of No, that? no, detectives aren't part of uh, that. The only... Um, Folks in administration that are part of bargaining units are the prosecutor and the prosecution secretary, and those those numbers are very small for those particular tasks. That's why the OT is, is so minimal. Uh, was minimal until we added the uh, stuff with the computers. Right, but I didn't know if maybe some of that came out of this line. No. Okay, no. thank you. No, that's the detective overtime. A lot of that stuff too we get offset. Remember, we uh, have a detective off um, for the DEA task force. And we're reimbursed up to seventeen thousand and five hundred dollars uh, of overtime for that. So that that helps us knock that down. And then we had an officer uh, with a homeland security task force that uh, up until last year. So we are being recruited also for another FBI task force. They're looking for people on H uh, State Streets grant. So we'll be looking at that as to whether it's possible or not. Uh, other areas. Okay, again, the vehicle maintenance is down. The training and uh, recruitment uh, is down. Uh, it's not. It's five hundred dollars. It's not a huge amount. Just trying to accurately reflect what we're doing up there with recruitment and doing more stuff uh, in house as opposed to advertising. The uh, Training recruitment's three thousand, but spent zero again. Is that something that's billed later? Uh, training and recruitment. Hold on one second. Four two one zero two. This is also part of our career development, which includes um, anything at school, uh, schools that are sponsored by the FBI, IACP, and 
what happened a couple of years ago because of the budget crunch at the state level, police standards and training. A lot of the trainings that they used to offer for free now are tuition based. But because of our adjustments where we host a lot of training now, we don't have to spend that money. So it's still there. I'd like to keep that item available in case those issues where, you know, FBI leadership group was in last week. If for some reason they couldn't come to Hampton and we had to send folks elsewhere for those type of trainings or an advanced uh, crime scene thing, I want to have that money available so I can send those people to keep our training levels up. But it's due to a lot of the, uh, the evidence tech training, we did that in Hampton this year. We hosted it, and because when we host training, we don't have to pay the tuition. We get free seats at the trainings we host. Okay, so. Anything else? Everything good on crime controls and investigations? Looks like it. 1.4%. Okay. Good. Traffic control and patrol. Up 1.80. Um, again, that's due again to consolidation. Or we zeroed out, which was a, our biggest vehicle maintenance line, was the one in traffic control patrol. That's now up in admin, so that's helped keep that number uh, pretty well down. Uh, consultants. We consolidated all our consulting into one line, so you're going to see that being down. And personal days down 41.1. That's we just took a hard look at our historical rates on the time the officers used personal days, um, vacation days, uh, sick days, and we tried to reflect uh, the money where we could cut and be safe or add where we needed to. That's what that's going to reflect. Vehicle replacement, you don't, you need fewer this year? Or? No, replacement vehicles, what we do with that is we use, our practice has been we replace three cars a year based on what we, how we, we, we beat on vehicles. It's just the way it is in an environment you highlighted before. So we try to replace three cars. They're somewhere around twenty six to 27000 per vehicle. What we try to do is use some of the outfitting costs. We use the Fund 26, the revolving detail account to cover some of those costs to outfit the vehicles. So we don't dip into the budget. We can save a little on the budget by doing that. As you recall earlier this year, we agreed to take one of the vehicles and buy it out of Fund 26 as opposed to the budget so we could make some of those traffic safety purchases we made like those water barricades and some of the fence. So the cost of the vehicles haven't gone up significantly. We used the state bid on that. They have not gone up significantly from the uh, 17th to the 18th. And if there is any change before the vehicles are ordered, we can absorb those under Fund under, uh, 26. Um, Chief, I have one question on sick leave coverage. As of 831, there's only 13,853 used. Okay. And you're budgeting an additional, like, what, almost 15,000? And again, that's just based on historical rates. Um, I think what you're going to see for the future is the new people coming into the workforce are of a different mindset. They value their time off more than they do overtime or detail pay and all that. So what you're going to see is a lot more of the, the, the usage of time for people to have time off. And so that's going to drive the costs up in certain areas. So that's what you're going to, I, I, I predict you're going to experience that at a more consistent rate throughout your departments uh, for the foreseeable future because that's just it's not good or bad. It's just the way the uh, you know the millennials and the people coming into the workforce they value their time and they use it. They don't keep a lot of time on the books. So that's what you're looking at. Thank you. Trustee. Nope. Awesome. Bill. Uh, One point eight percent. Well done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have a question on the vacation coverage. Went up seventy percent. Is that because you consolidated something or something? <coughs> Seventy-nine, eight, nine, one, and it's one thirty-six, three, seven, eight. 
Yeah, actually, I, I had to really work with that number hard. We had to adjust the number of days used. When you look at the run rate and you use average rates for sergeants and average rate for patrol, it came out to we were using a uh, average of 12 days to make that number. We had to move that up to 20 to reflect the actual rate that we've been running at. So, again, they're using their time. They're going, you're not going to see people with, you know, maxed out on sick time when they when they get to the point where they leave this department at some point. You're not going to see a lot of people with 400 hours. You don't see it anymore. So that's what that reflects. Pretty good. Thank you. Brady? Training, we have a uh, pretty significant increase with um, mainly training and recruitment. That's the only increase is the training and recruitment area, and I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find the appropriate page. We've added in that area, um, going back and looking at our ammunition use, we're trying to stay ahead of that curve. You know, we do burn a lot of ammunition during our training. A lot of the people that are coming to us don't have any experience with firearms, so that takes a little bit more. We have to go out there more and let them fire more rounds. You're also seeing us changing. Uh, for many years, you would see we'd have a line item for shotgun ammunition. The only shotgun ammunition we're using now is the non, uh, the less lethal stuff, the beanbag rounds. So I've cut that out and tried to add into the areas we are shooting. The 223 rounds, the patrol rifles are more expensive than shotgun rounds. And with the situation we have going on right now, I anticipate ammunition costs are going to go up again, like they did a couple of years ago. And then adding on um, a lot of the stuff we use for our crowd control, um, OC, beanbag rounds, tasers, and taser ammunition, those are all fairly pricey items. And we're trying to stay ahead of that. As uh, you may recall, we were getting to the point where tasers were starting to fail, and we had the first generation tasers. You could not send them back. They, don't, they didn't service them anymore. So we were getting to that point. We want to get into a rotation of buying at least six tasers every year and uh, maintaining those, even if we have to keep them on the shelf, that when they fail, because we still have a number of the first generations, as those fail, we want to be able to hand somebody a new taser without having to wait three weeks for delivery. So we're trying to keep those stockpiles where they need to be. So that's what the increase is there. And good. Oh, I'm good. Rusty. Good. No. Negative, sir. I noticed in the consultants that requested 33,500 and administration 3,500. Okay, we decreased the administration by 3,500. We removed the 30,000 added. Uh, originally, we had, had put in a, a thing for a policy review. We removed that item. That was a $30,000 item. Okay. We are due for a policy review with uh, the changes in the law, uh, court decisions, those type of things. We really need to update those to be current. In order to do that, it's either I dedicate this gentleman to that task for the rest of the year and into next year for the first six months with no other room for anything, or we bring in a private consultant to do that. So what I'm hoping we can accomplish is if we have an, a, a sum of money between either asset forfeiture money I have in those accounts or surplus from this year to try to execute that, but we remove that uh, from the consultants. That's uh, the request of 33500 uh, the 30000 uh, 30, of that was removed. Okay. 
Anybody got anything else? So just to clarify, if you can find that maybe left over in this year's, you would try to Absolutely. get it, the it, consultant? It, we are going to have to conduct a policy review and update okay. pretty quickly because if we don't, some of the policies are very outdated. Some of them are written, you know, we've tried to keep up with them, but as law enforcement changes drastically over the last 10 years, trying to keep up with the changes, and they're, I mean, they're yearly changes. If we go to a system like this, we can make those changes with an outside validation. Uh, we would use it, we have a sole source provider on, on, a, on a product that we've seen and, and talked to other agencies that have utilized this that would make it much easier for us to keep current as opposed to waiting every four or five years or for a new chief to come in and decide he wants to go in this direction or that. This is built in. It would ensure that the officers are getting the information, reading it, and validating the fact that they received it and were trained. Because if the time comes when we get sued for things like use of force, the first thing they go after is our training records and our policies to make sure the policies we have are updated. The things that we used 30 years ago to stop uses of gun in our use of force, some of them aren't even legal anymore. You, you know, you know, get down to our PD and you look at some of the old implements of ignorance, we call them, in the showcase, you can't use those anymore. We have to stay current and use modern tactics and techniques to avoid the, the, the liability issues. This is our best way to do that, is to get an updated policy manual so we can follow it and keep updating it as we move forward. Thank you. So, Training uh, support services. There's going to be some adjustments in the lines, uh, trying to move things around. As you recall, a number of years ago, uh, I think it was last year, uh, we introduced the outside agency line. I believe there was 30,000 in that line, and we also adjusted the part time line. Uh, we reduced some money there and added money to um, the full-time officers covering the part-time schedule because our run rates reflected that, that we're exceeding one and running short on the other. So we just adjusted some of that money, then we added the 30000 for the um, outside agencies, and one of the things I asked for is to add uh, another $10,000 to the uh, outside agencies. Simply looking at the run rate this year and the amount of times that we use those outside officers uh, would warrant that additional $10,000 in that line. Additionally, let's see, training wages. Are up 51.78. That just has more to do with the fact that we're going to be doing more training, bringing more new people in. We just ran a test uh, last Saturday. Uh, we actually got pretty good results, the best we've seen in a couple of years. We uh, ran our interviews, and we have 17 candidates moving forward. We haven't seen that many moving forward at this stage of the process in a few years. So anticipating that we're going to finally start turning, hopefully, a corner with the recruitment aspects, trying to build some more money in, it, in the average the average rates have also gone up due to the CBA, so that's part of the things. The wages are going up for the officers, but the wages are also going up for the trainers. So a lot of that's going to be overtime. So that's what that reflects. Questions? Just um, one thing on the outside agencies. So I see you spent a little over, so far, 33000 That's only through the end of August, though, so Correct. probably... And I just wanted to say that, I mean, I think it's great that you did that and that we able to have all that police presence around town, especially during the summer seasons when we have a lot of visitors, because with everything that's going on in the country, I think it, may, it should make people feel very comfortable that you're on top of that. I believe just that the, the visible presence of law enforcement does bring a degree of comfort to people, the perception. Um, it's just one of those things that, you know, when you're bringing in outside agencies, you want to vet to make sure those agencies, their dedication and, uh, to training and professionalism matches ours. And then we've been very careful about the agencies we bring in. And so far, this is the second year of that program, and it's worked very well. Uh, the, 
relationships we have with those agencies, primarily UNH, Epping, Exeter, Seabrook, uh, there's a couple others out there, but we train with those folks on a regular basis between the CERT team and the crowd control training, and that's one of the requirements that we all use departments that allow their officers to come down and train with us, particularly in the, uh, the crowd control issues. Uh, just one of those things where we'd have an incident, you want to have people that are competent and understand what we're trying to accomplish uh, because you don't want to be gasoline on the fire or something like that. You want to be able to quell the problem, do it quickly and with as little use of force as possible. So I think it's been a success to this point. So that's why I'm requesting the extra funding for that. Thank you. All set? Negative, sir. When you were talking about the training wages and, and increasing the number of people, getting increased applications and increased people, how many people could you add? Well, we, we are allowed up to 70 part-time officers. As we sit here, I believe we're at 30. Okay. So we're 40 shy of our maximum. And just to put it in perspective, 70 is a, a number we've only achieved once or twice in the 22 years I've been with this department. But when I uh, took over uh, the scheduling back in... 2006, I was working with approximately 55 special officers working over 250 shifts a week. As we sit here today, we're working with 30 officers and we fall behind below 100 shifts being worked. That's a significant drop. Now, I would say that the beach and the operations changed significantly. Um, with the improvements uh, that we, we've seen down at the beach, um, and the stand that we've taken as a town and the state to curb the rowdy behavior, I think it's helpful. Uh, but that does not negate the possibility that if we don't maintain that level, that that type of behavior is going to creep back. Okay, it's going to come back up. There was a time where you could go down the beach and pick out the different corners and different <clears throat> parts of the beach where the different gangs from south, you know, south of the border here were setting up shop. And it took a lot to get them to move along. Uh, I don't want to be there to see that come back. Too many people, the town, the state, the businesses, the residents have invested too much to allow that to happen. So if we have to utilize the outside officers for now, um, nothing would make me happier to see nothing but a sea of Hampton Green. But right now, that's just not feasible to fulfill what we need to do to make the place safe. Um, so using the agencies, the state police, the sheriffs, and now the outside agencies, I think, uh, I think it bodes well in the world we live in. Uh, the days of not knowing your neighbors are over. We all know each other. We all work together. We all train together. Preparing for those type of incidents where you have to have that extra help, you're not strangers. I think that makes a uh, just a smart policy and practice. Support services. Yeah. yeah, special details. That line you see is doesn't really exist because we use the Fund 26 now. That's the old lines uh, back when we used to have uh, funding that was not in the revolving account like we have today. Okay, go to the police station and building. Yeah. Uh, Building maintenance is the significant one going up, and the reason for that is over the last couple of years, we're at the 12-year mark now uh, for being in the PD, and we're starting to see things fail on a pretty consistent basis. We've had compressors, we've had air handlers, gates, the louvers for the airflow system. Uh, when we built it, we didn't go with the marine-grade louvers in an effort to save money. Well, they froze up on us, and it caused a ripple effect with the system. So those were replaced last year with some uh, surplus funding. I just don't want to re rely on surplus funding to take care of these problems, so I want to try to build some of that in there uh, in anticipation that it's things are going to fail. We're in a, a marine environment, um, and maintenance is necessary for that building to run. Other than that, the uh, increases are minor. Um, vacation coverage is up a little bit. That's... Our janitorial staff, we have to cover uh, for somebody to come in and do the, uh, the maintenance if he's gone on vacation for a week or two. So we had to go up a little on that. And then the electric uh, reflects the increase in rates that we anticipate. And 
and that's about it. Questions? All set. I, I noticed on grants that you had 8,000 this year and you're anticipating nothing or? You got to anticipate grants. Most of the grants we get right now are known commodities to us. Homeland Security, New Hampshire Highway Safety. So I can't really refer to those as unanticipated. Those are regularly scheduled grants. If we were to get a grant, um, I guess the ones that you would look at, and we, we haven't had a real uh, thirst to go after, is something like a COPS grant, where they'll offer us a certain percentage of money, a 50% match, to hire more police officers. And at the end, though, you own the whole 100% after the, you know, it's usually a three-year term for those. They cover 50% for three officers was the last one that we had. And we had to turn that back in because it just wasn't a will to move forward due to the uh, economic climate at the time. So I don't anticipate that's going to change uh, for the foreseeable future. So we just, we don't put any money in that right now. You know, if I thought there was a potential of, a 50% match grant for an officer, then I'd be asking for that amount, the half of what it would be to uh, fill a uniform. But I don't believe that's going to occur, so I don't want to put money in there if I have no real true belief that's going to happen. Bottom line is... Uh, Four million two hundred ninety-four thousand one hundred forty-eight dollars. That accounts for the six point two four increase from last year. And Fred, I didn't ask you in the fire. So yeah. I'll ask you now. Do you have anything to add? No, we went through this pretty thoroughly with the department. And, uh, we we had agreed with their explanations of what they put in. Um, the biggest problem we have is personnel. I mean, we just don't have enough, and uh, that's the reason for the large agency fees. We just have to continue to work to try to increase the size of the department for our specials. That will alleviate a lot of problems as we move along. Anybody else get anything on the bottom line? Yes, sir. I just did say that, again, like I said to the fire, you're going to have to promote this. You know that because, you know, people have to know that what the, what they're paying for is, is, is needed. And, and we all need that. We all know that and we realize that. But we, to get a budget passed, we got to really promote. Yeah. Well, as you may have heard, I do have a tendency to linger around in area coffee shops and talk a lot. So I've been already on top of that. So I didn't hear about the coffee shop, but the talking a lot, I did hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. I'm being facetious. I'm yes, yes. I can't help myself sometimes. Um, animal control officer, uh, as you know, our longtime 30 year animal control officer uh, decided to vacate the premises on us. Um, great job. He's uh, been a lot of fun to work with. Uh, got me a few good headlines and pictures in the newspaper last, you know, this year. Um, I'll miss that. Not. Um, chickens running loose, livestock running loose, and my <laughs> office are gone. Uh, but uh, you do see a reflected change in the line item for regular wages it's dropped from the budget of uh, this year 46384 down to 39998 that reflects the uh, uh, senior animal control officer at starting step and that's per the uh, teamster CBA so that's the biggest change there so that's down 13.77 percent OT wages um, Put that up a little bit simply because it, it says 57%, but it's a jump from 3,500. We added 2,000 dollars to that because, as a new animal control officer, he, uh, this, uh, the animal control officer, Mr. Palmazano, does not have the training experience that Peter has after 30 years. So we anticipate a number of things. We're going to have to get more current uh, with his training, uh, as there is now a uh, an, an animal control officers association being formed in the state of New Hampshire trying to come up with best practices and looking at some of the stuff that they're talking about that everybody should have. We're trying to anticipate providing that training to the animal control officer. So that's uh, the OT wages on that. So 
supplies and expenses, uh, we went up fifteen hundred dollars to five thousand for a forty-two point eight six increase. What we found is uh, just inventorying all the equipment that we had in stock. It was time for some upgrades with many of the traps that Peter used. Uh, they have a you know have a hard traps. A lot of them were getting older, and again, working in the environment we work in, a lot of the stuff that we do is along the, the marshes, and uh, when we have those nuisance animals, they corrode. Uh, some of the traps are no longer that functional, and I don't want to wait for them to break while we have an animal in the trap halfway through. So we're trying to resupply some of the equipment uh, that has been with us for as long as Pete's been with us. Some of the equipment came with Pete when he got hired in 1987. So it's time to upgrade some of the equipment. So that reflects the it's uh, overall the budget is down 5.48 percent, but that decreases primarily because of the uh, gasoline is down. We have a more f uh, efficient vehicle with the van and the wages. So that accounts for the decrease in the budget in that area. Questions? No, we had a great great animal control officer with Pete. He was with us a long time. And <laughs> We appreciated his service, but the new guy's doing a great job. Easiest also. budget ever. You just come in and repeat. <laughs> <laughs> new guy's doing a great job. Emergency yeah. management. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to add to? No, we're having a good time here. Um, it's a difficult. It's a difficult job. Yeah. The animals, of course, you can't talk to them, so you have to figure out what's on their mind in order to get a hold of them and take care of the effort that needs to be expended on this. Uh, we have a good man. He's out there working. He's he's doing the job well. Chief is very satisfied and happy with him. And uh, everybody that uh, I've talked to that has talked to me who's had the opportunity to call him and have him come down for one reason or another is very happy with the result. Emergency management? No changes. Uh, we, we maintain that $1,000. I think most of the cost when we uh, were coming into a drill cycle year, so a lot of the expenses are reimbursed. Uh, I just got our letter from New Hampshire Homeland Security Emergency Management. Uh, we received $21,000 and some change for our participation in the drills and the issues with uh, that come up with Seabrook Station. Uh, I think that's woefully low. Uh, I think the state really needs to take a hard look at the funding mechanism. I've had the opportunity to speak to other emergency management directors uh, in the area. Uh, certainly not satisfied with the funding issues. Uh, but it's one of those things that, you know, we've come to, to realize that a lot of the stuff that could occur, we're going to be on our own for a little bit, and we have to be prepared to deal with that until an issue gets, you know, the function of emergency management is when a situation, whatever it may be, gets to the point that we can no longer handle it alone at our level. Well, as we've seen in those issues where we have the snowstorms or we have the tidal surges, it's not just a Hampton issue usually, it's a regional issue. And so having that funding more directly funded to the towns is something I think we need to hand to our legislators and, and uh, to pursue that because uh, most of the money that comes either through the Fed or through entities like Seabrook Station don't get dispersed directly to us they now get filtered through Homeland Security and we just like to see a little bit more of that because you know we're a seaside community and we go from a nice little town compared to, say, Exodus population to the biggest city in the state of New Hampshire. And if we have an incident during one of those crowded weekends, we're going to have our hands full dealing with problems. And a lot of it is along Ocean Boulevard and trying to deal with those issues that come off, off the beach with the massive crowds. So I'm going to try to pursue a little more funding. We were fortunate we got a little bit more than we anticipated, but I still think it's uh, a little bit low for what we should be getting back. So. This is kind of a wash account. That's the way I look at it. It's $1,000 we have in there. I would love to see us again. I would advocate if we could ever go to an independent entity as emergency management director, but I know in the current environment, people are going to have to wear two hats, and then we can get it done. Jamie and I do a pretty good job coordinating things. We receive pretty high marks for our, our uh, coordination of our uh, command post when we have it, the EOC, so those things are going good. But I just <coughs> anticipate with things going on, with the issues we deal with, be they natural or man-made, uh, these essential functions are going to become more uh, imperative uh, to the safety of this town. So just want to open your eyes to that. The $1,000 will get our reimbursements the best we can from the state and federal entities, uh, and we can hold fast with this for now, but I think somewhere down the line we have to change the funding me mechanism from the state so we're not bearing that because it does come out of our budgets in other areas when we have to.
some of the overtime does get absorbed out of the police, fire, and public works, depending on what's going on. So I just don't think that's the way the state should be operating with us. So, But that's for future discussions, I'm sure. Okay. Thank you, Chief. No questions. All set. Uh, I'm prepared to uh, make the motion. But are we going to vote? Do we need to vote? Up to you. One, two, three, or can we vote all three? Yeah, you can vote all three if you okay. want. Any way you want to I do this. The uh, police budget in its entirety is represented uh, this evening by the chief of police. Second. Which includes the animal control and, and emergency management. Yes, sir. Second. Okay, all in favor? Fine. Super. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, XL. Next, library, please. I asked special to be squashed in the middle of this uh, or the end of this meeting. <laughs> so thank you very much for staying a little bit later. I hope not to take too much of your time. Don't worry. There are a few changes to our 2018 request for budget. They're all in service to the same thing. Full-time wages are up part-time wages are down and our health insurance is up. What we have done is reclaimed a full-time position that we restructured in 2013. We had a full-time member leave midway through the year 2013. We took a look at our organization, reordered, reordered um, workflows, created two part-time positions. We worked through that for four years, got noticed that our, one of the part-time people was gonna leave, took that opportunity to review how that was going for us, how that was working administratively, made the choice to reunite that position and make it full-time again. So we're really reclaiming a decision we made four years ago. Um, there are some cuts in our operating budget. Those are basically the things we felt we could sacrifice to try to make this increase as as least as unpainful as possible. So that's really the that's the, the long the short of it. That's the only thing in the budget for 2018. I would welcome any questions you have. Questions. Who'd you bring with you? This, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Bob Lamoth. I'm the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Library. Very good. Nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you. No. Not so. So the major things you're saying are all related because you restructured. Exactly. And you now have, in essence, another full-time position. Right. So reclaiming the full-time position that we gave up in 2013. Exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for uh, your leadership at the library. Amanda, great library, love it. And uh, I have no questions and I'm eager to hear a motion. Okay, uh, just the, the big one is the health insurance, huh? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And that's on a department like ours, one plan makes all the difference. Within the town, bringing on one new employee doesn't make as big a wave, but for us it obviously does. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I, I want to uh, ditto what uh, Chairman. What, Bean, Mr. Bean said that the library is constantly used. It's a great library. You see people in and out all day long. And I think in a lot of other towns, you don't see that. You don't, you don't see as much use. You don't see as much going on in the library. So it's a great, so very good. Uh, I would uh, move the budget as presented, Mr. Chen. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was uh, relatively quick. Well done, Mr. Chen. Well, I didn't. Did you have anything to say? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, you know, just before we leave, sir, and before we get off the budget, yeah. you might just explain to people watching, some people might not understand how the budget process works. By statute, um, the department heads prepare budgets. I, I request them to do that. Uh, it is reviewed by myself and the uh, assistant town manager. Uh, once we have reviewed that and we have made appropriate changes to the budget, uh, it is put together by the finance department. It is then forwarded to the Board of Selectmen for their review with the individual departments. We, we tend to just sit and watch because we want you to hear exactly what they have to say, not what we have to say. Uh, once you approve the budgets and come down with a final budget total, uh, that is then put in proper form and given to the budget committee and they go through the same process. Uh, it then goes to the deliberative session after a public hearing. The deliberative session can either add, subtract, or do as they please with the budget. 
and then it goes to the annual town meeting for ballot vote. In a nutshell, that's it. And, and, and which committee owns the budget, per se? By statute, the budget committee owns the budget. Right. I just want people to understand the whole process, how it goes through, because right. I think some people, voters, they don't understand exactly what happens. It, it's confusing, because it's not like an open town meeting process. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Want to say I'm anything? good, thank you. Say anything? Sure. Christy, would you like to say anything? <laughs> got the opportunity to be on TV and talk. Good night. And <laughs> good, night. <laughs> good night. That's a good thing. Motion to adjourn at 821. Second. All in favor? <laughs> good all. Thank you.